Imagine a point in space where everything we know about physics completely breaks down. A place where time stops making sense, where space itself gets twisted beyond recognition, and where our greatest scientific minds hit a wall. This isn't science fiction, this is real, and it's happening right now at the center of every black hole in our universe. Today we're diving into one of the most mind-bending concepts in all of astrophysics, singularities. These mysterious points in space challenge everything we think we know about reality itself. By the end of this video, you'll understand what singularities are, where they exist, and why they represent the ultimate frontier in modern physics. Trust me, this is going to blow your mind. So grab your favorite drink, get comfortable, and let's explore the places where the universe itself seems to give up on its own rules. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is a singularity? In simple terms, a singularity is a point in space where the normal laws of physics completely break down. Think of it like this. Imagine trying to divide a number by zero on your calculator. Your calculator would give you an error message because mathematically, this operation doesn't make sense. A singularity is nature's version of that error message. At a singularity, two things happen that our brains struggle to comprehend. First, density becomes infinite. Now, when I say infinite, I don't mean really, really big. I mean literally infinite, without limit or end. Second, the curvature of space-time also becomes infinite. To understand what this means, picture a bowling ball placed on a stretched rubber sheet. The ball creates a dip in the sheet, right? That's similar to how massive objects bend space-time around them. But at a singularity, that dip becomes infinitely deep. It's like the rubber sheet develops a hole that goes down forever. Here's where it gets really wild. Gravity pulls all matter into this single point of infinite compression, and our current understanding of physics, even Einstein's theory of relativity, simply can't describe what happens there. It's like having a map that just says, here be dragons at certain spots. Now you might be wondering, if we can't understand singularities, how do we know they exist? Great question. We know they exist because we can observe their effects, even if we can't directly study the singularities themselves. Let me tell you about the two main places where we believe singularities exist. The first and most famous location is at the center of black holes. Picture this, you have a massive star, maybe 20 or 30 times more massive than our sun. This star has been burning for millions of years, fighting a constant battle between two forces. On one side, you have nuclear fusion in the star's core, pushing outward with tremendous energy. On the other side, you have the star's own gravity, trying to crush everything inward. For most of the star's life, these forces are balanced, but eventually the star runs out of fuel for fusion. When that happens, gravity wins, and it wins big. The star's core collapses in less than a second. Imagine something with the mass of several suns compressed into a space smaller than a city then smaller than a building, then smaller than a car. The collapse doesn't stop there. According to our current understanding, it keeps going until all that mass gets crushed into a single point, a singularity. This creates what we call a gravitational well so deep that nothing, not even light, can escape once it gets too close. That's why we call it a black hole. The boundary around this region is called the event horizon, and it's like a one-way door to nowhere. But here's the really mind-bending part. If you could somehow survive falling into a black hole, time would behave very strangely. As you got closer to the singularity, time would slow down from the perspective of someone watching you from far away. To them, you'd appear to freeze at the event horizon, but from your perspective, you'd continue falling toward the singularity in what would feel like normal time. Scientists call this effect time dilation, and it's one of the many ways singularities break our normal understanding of reality. Now let's talk about the second place where we believe a singularity existed, the very beginning of our universe. This is called the Big Bang Singularity, and it's even more mind-blowing than black hole singularities. About 13.8 billion years ago, our entire universe, everything that exists, has existed or ever will exist, was compressed into a single point. Not just all the matter and energy, but space and time themselves. Think about that for a moment. Every star you've ever seen, every planet, every grain of sand on every beach, every atom in your body, all of it was once part of an infinitely dense, infinitely small point. 
Then, in an instant, this singularity began expanding, not expanding into empty space. Space itself was expanding. In the first fraction of a second, the universe grew from smaller than an atom to larger than a grapefruit. This might not sound impressive until you realize this happened in less time than it takes light to travel across a proton. The rate of expansion was so fast that it makes the speed of light look like a crawl. Scientists call this period cosmic inflation, and it set the stage for everything that followed. As the universe continued expanding and cooling, the first particles formed, then the first atoms, then the first stars, and eventually, billions of years later, planets like Earth. But here's what's really fascinating. We can actually observe evidence of this Big Bang singularity. When we look at the cosmic microwave background radiation, basically the afterglow of the Big Bang, we can see tiny fluctuations that were imprinted when the universe was only 380,000 years old. These fluctuations are like baby pictures of our universe, showing us the seeds that would eventually grow into galaxies and galaxy clusters. Now you might be thinking, if singularities are where physics breaks down, how can scientists study them at all? This brings us to one of the biggest mysteries in modern physics. At a singularity, our two best theories about the universe, quantum mechanics and general relativity, give completely different answers. It's like having two expert witnesses who tell completely opposite stories about the same event. General relativity, Einstein's theory of gravity, tells us that massive objects bend space-time. It works perfectly for describing planets orbiting stars, light bending around galaxies, and even the expansion of the universe. But when you try to apply it to singularities, the math gives you infinite answers, which don't make physical sense. Quantum mechanics, on the other hand, describes the behavior of the smallest particles in the universe. It's incredibly successful at explaining atoms, molecules, and the forces that hold matter together. But quantum mechanics says that nothing can be perfectly localized to a single point. There's always some uncertainty, some fuzziness, to the location of particles. So which theory is right? The honest answer is that we don't know yet. Most physicists believe that somewhere at the extreme conditions of a singularity, these two theories must somehow work together. This hypothetical unified theory is often called quantum gravity, and finding it is one of the holy grails of modern physics. Some scientists think string theory might provide answers. Others are exploring loop quantum gravity or other exotic theories. But so far, no one has cracked the code. This is why singularities represent such an important frontier in science. They're not just interesting cosmic curiosities, they're pointing us toward gaps in our understanding of reality itself. Let me give you an analogy that might help. Imagine you're an ancient explorer with a map of the known world. Most of the map is filled in with cities, mountains and rivers. But at the edges, there are blank spaces marked unknown territory. Singularities are like those blank spaces on the map of physics. They show us where our current knowledge ends and where new discoveries await. Here's another mind-bending aspect of singularities. They challenge our very notion of cause and effect. Let's talk about what it would actually be like near a singularity. If you were an astronaut falling into a black hole, you'd experience something called spaghettification. This happens because the gravitational field gets stronger as you get closer to the singularity. The gravity pulling on your feet would be much stronger than the gravity pulling on your head. This difference would stretch you out like a piece of spaghetti, eventually tearing you apart. But here's the weird part. If the black hole were massive enough, you might actually cross the event horizon without feeling any immediate effects. The spaghettification would happen gradually as you continued falling toward the central singularity. From your perspective, you'd just be floating in what seems like empty space. You wouldn't see a sign saying, welcome to the black hole. You'd only realize something was wrong when you looked back and couldn't see the outside universe anymore. Meanwhile, to someone watching you from a safe distance, you'd appear to slow down and freeze at the event horizon, your image getting redder and dimmer until it faded away. This is because the extreme gravity would slow down time for you relative to the outside observer. It's like the universe's ultimate magic trick. You'd simultaneously appear to freeze from the outside and continue falling from your own perspective. Now let's consider the implications of the Big Bang singularity. If our universe really did start from a singularity, it raises some profound questions. What existed before the Big Bang? 
What caused the singularity to start expanding? Could there be other universes that started from their own singularities? Some scientists have proposed that our Big Bang might have been the result of a previous universe collapsing into a singularity, creating a kind of cosmic recycling process. Others suggest that new universes might be constantly forming from singularities, creating an infinite multiverse. These ideas push the boundaries of science into philosophy and force us to question our most basic assumptions about existence itself. Here's something that might surprise you. Singularities might actually be necessary for the existence of complex structures in the universe. Without the extreme density fluctuations that occurred near the Big Bang singularity, matter might have been spread too evenly throughout space. This would have prevented the formation of stars, galaxies, and eventually planets capable of supporting life. In a strange way, the breakdown of physics at singularities might be essential for the existence of everything we see around us. The study of singularities has also led to important advances in mathematics and computer science. The techniques developed to handle infinite values and undefined quantities have found applications in fields ranging from economics to artificial intelligence. Sometimes the most abstract scientific concepts end up having very practical benefits. Looking toward the future, several exciting developments might help us better understand singularities. Gravitational wave detectors like LIGO have already allowed us to observe black holes merging, giving us new insights into these extreme objects. Future space-based detectors will be even more sensitive and might detect gravitational waves from near singularities themselves. We're also developing more powerful computer simulations that can model the extreme conditions near singularities. While we can't eliminate the infinities from our equations yet, we can study what happens in the regions just outside singularities with increasing precision. Quantum computers, still in their early stages, might eventually be powerful enough to tackle the mathematical complexity of quantum gravity theories. These machines work on quantum mechanical principles themselves, so they might be naturally suited to exploring the quantum nature of space-time. There's also growing interest in laboratory experiments that might create analog singularities. These wouldn't be real gravitational singularities, but they might exhibit similar mathematical properties using sound waves, light, or other phenomena. By studying these analogues, scientists hope to gain insights into the behavior of actual singularities. Singularities challenge us to expand our thinking beyond the comfortable boundaries of familiar physics. They force us to consider possibilities that seem impossible and to accept that some questions might not have simple answers. In many ways, singularities represent both the limits of current scientific knowledge and the unlimited potential for future discoveries. So there you have it. Singularities are truly the ultimate cosmic mystery. These points where physics breaks down challenge everything we think we know about space, time, and reality itself. From the crushing depths of black holes to the explosive birth of our universe, singularities represent the most extreme conditions imaginable. They're places where infinite density meets infinite space-time curvature, where our best theories give up and say, we don't know. But that's exactly what makes them so exciting. Every time science has encountered something it couldn't explain, those mysteries have led to revolutionary breakthroughs. Singularities might hold the key to understanding quantum gravity, the nature of time, and perhaps even the existence of other universes. What do you think about these cosmic enigmas? Do you believe true singularities actually exist, or do you think they're just mathematical curiosities that will disappear when we develop better theories? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I love hearing your perspectives on these mind-bending topics. If this video expanded your understanding of the universe, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more deep dives into the mysteries of space and physics. Hit that notification bell so you never miss our latest explorations of the cosmos. And remember, in a universe full of singularities and infinite possibilities, the only limit to discovery is our willingness to keep asking questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll continue our journey through the most fascinating corners of the universe.